Okay, so we uh, add reverb to our instruments, uh, mostly to give them a sense of space. Uh, when you go into a studio and the place is, uh, I don't want to say dead, but the reflections are very controlled, it's very different than uh, when you have when you play an instrument in an open space. The, the, all of a sudden, that instrument feels like it's bigger, like it's got more dynamics, like it's part of the space. So you try to use reverbs to uh, give your instrument uh, a sense of size and also a sense of location. Like you can use it to place them in a particular room uh, and help them blend in uh, with the rest of your instruments. Uh, also to help them stand out if, if need be. So we have the session, let's take a look uh, on how that could work. All right, so adding reverb to your instrument. So for this one, we're gonna keep it super basic. Uh, we're gonna add reverb to a snare. I don't want reverb on the kicks, I typically, I mean, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but for the example's sake, let's just do it to the snare. So the first thing you're gonna need is a some kind of auxiliary track. Uh, different DAWs do it differently. Uh, Ableton has what's called return tracks. Uh, here in Protos, they're called aux tracks. We're gonna call this snare verb and we're going to add a reverb there a reverb plugin so we're going to go down to our list reverb nah you know what let's go with no that's not going to load let's go with our verb okay so this is a typical reverb i'm just going to load a very basic uh, drum preset uh, let's say a hall and let's say a medium hall okay so the next thing you need to do is connect this track with this aux track over here. And you do that through a bus and a send. So the send is going to use a bus to get to that particular aux track right here. Uh, I could do it one of two ways. I could just choose like the bus here or I could go track and then there's my snare verb. And then if I choose it, it's just going to make the connection automatically. That's the easiest. And then the last thing is to actually send that effect over. You need to open up the send. So if I open it up right now, it'll be on the whole track. As you can hear, it's on the whole thing, but I just want it on the snare, so I'm just gonna do a quick uh, automation. Since this is set to tempo, and I know the snare is gonna happen just about here always, I could always just automate that send, okay, just make it so that in that one, when only when the snare hits, the, set, the snare or the send is going to be up. And then I could just duplicate that, because snares typically happen in the same place always, so then you'd have a dry kick and a wet snare. So now, If you wanted to add a little bit more effect to the rest of the drum kit, like just so that it won't be completely dry, you could always add, you know, automate that as well, add a little bit there, and then same process, just duplicate, just make sure that, make sure that when you do the duplication, that your original one, there you go, sticks, and there you go. So now I have a little bit of, a little bit of reverb on the kick and a lot of reverb on the snare. So that gives you a better sense of, it, it makes it feel a little bit more real at the end of the day. All right guys, that was just a small example of how to uh, use reverbs uh, in your mix. Uh, there's so much more you can do with it. Uh, be creative, uh, it's a tool. Uh, there's no rules, there's only guidelines. Uh, if you wanna learn more or see more, please visit uh, sae.edu for more tutorials and I'll see you next time.